Made It Mondays with Crafting Cousins. Let's craft, y'all! Hey, y'all, it's Kay. As you know, our challenge for this month is scarecrows. I am going to be actually making a scarecrow for my side porch. And I'm going to be using these old overalls. I got mine at the thrift store really cheap. They are kid size. They're like an extra large girls. So cute little overalls. I got this blue plaid shirt. If you recall, I told you I wanted to do blue and orange this time because blue is a real popular color for fall this year and I love blue and orange together. I got this cute little hat from the Dollar Tree. You probably saw it in a haul. This is some old fabric that was from a sheet that I used to line a curtain that I did for my daughter's dorm several years ago. I'm going to use it to make the head of my scarecrow by making a little pocket, but I'm going to tea dye it so it will be off white. Of course, I got some raffia. I got it 40% off with my coupon at Hobby Lobby. I thought it was hilarious that it says Super Moss. I had never seen it called that, but here it does say raffia. I have an assortment of ribbon, different widths, different fall blue and oranges. I also have this scrap fabric left over from one project. I got some flowers to go on my hat. And I also have a tomato steak. Hard for me to get it on camera. It was together one long tomato steak and now it's cut off. And I'm probably going to tee it and therefore I can attach my hat, and then I'll put this down the spine of my um, scarecrow. So that's what I'm going to do. This is going to be kind of a support. I'm not going to hang my scarecrow, although you could, a lot of people do. Mine is going to sit on a chair on my little porch that I'm going to decorate. So that's what I've gathered so far. Let's get started. I've got to go outside and get some pine straw and stuff it into some garbage bags. And that's what I'm going to put down the legs of my scarecrow and the body, and possibly the head. And y'all, of course, we're going to need lots of zip ties for this project. First, I'm going to be working on the head. This is a small kitchen garbage bag, and I have it stuffed with straw, which is what I'm going to be using to stuff the body of my scarecrow as well. It's I don't know if you could tell right there, it is oat straw. This whole bale I used very little of for the entire scarecrow, but it was real cheap. I think we paid $2 for the bale, and we'll use it in a lot of Halloween decorations and fall. You can also use pine straw if you have an abundance of that in your yard. There's a lot of things you could do. You could even stuff other trash bags inside like you get from Walmart and those kind of stores. You could do that as well. So the next thing we're going to do is work on this head and make sure it fits in our cap. Something like that. So that's how I determined the size of that. And I just balled it up and added some extra tape on the sides. The sheet I showed you earlier, I tea stained it and I took it to my soy machine and I just made a simple stitch. I didn't even worry if it was terribly straight down the sides. I'm going to put my head in there, my pistol head, and yeah, it's not perfect, but we'll hide all of this under the hat, right? So we'll bring this down and kind of gather it up, and I'm going to put a zip tie there. But before I do that, I want to put the face on. So I'm going to take my hat, we'll decorate this hat also, by the way, and put my hat in there and determine where I want my face to go. I fastened just a little pipe cleaner right there or a snail stem for right now. I will put a zip tie in it permanently once I get the face painted. I'm going to pull these and tuck them in the back and put some hair on him. And this is going to be the face. I just wanted to print out a little face that I found online because I didn't want to mess it up. And I'm going to tape it down and then I'll take a pencil and trace on the back and then get my pattern on here, and then we'll begin painting it and putting it in. I think that's going to be very cute. I'm going to take the bag back out, lay this flat, and paint this on. 
I'm using my pencil and I'm just drawing all over my paper and filling in the items I want to trace. When I flip it over on my pillowcase, then I can trace the lines in and it will show my pattern. I just take my pencil and outline all of the areas that I want to color in or paint. I'm going to use a combination of some orange paint, some blue paint, and some white, as well as a permanent black marker. to trace in the rest of my items. I'm going to outline a lot of the areas. And then I'll come back in with some paint. I love scarecrows for fall. What is your favorite thing for fall that gets you in the mood to decorate and celebrate fall? And I'm taking a really fine detailed brush and putting in the blue area of my scarecrow's eyes. And then I go back in and fill in the white areas. For the nose, I decided I would take a piece of felt that I have and I just painted it orange and I'm just going to cut it into a little triangle and that will be the nose for my scarecrow in a moment. Just using some hot glue, I place it down on the scarecrow. Now I want to make a bow by taking a couple of loops of ribbon, tying some thin ribbon around it, and then I'm going to put a flower in the middle and decorate the hat. I just turn up the brim put in a little glue. I'm going back to detail my nose a little bit. I'm going to put some lines to make it look like it's hand stitched on. And then I use some of my old blush and give my scarecrow some pink cheeks. And now to stuff the legs, I want to use zip ties about three inches in on each of the legs and I just cut off the excess with my wire cutters. You could put some ribbon around these areas to cover them up, but they really don't show. And I do the same thing on the arms at the cuff. I put a little ascot in the pocket. And now I'm just taking some strings off each side of a little square. And I'm going to use that to decorate the leg of my scarecrow's jeans. Now I'm going to work on my head a little more. Get it stuffed in just right. Put my stick down the middle and tie the bag around it. And then placing it inside my little head sack. Then I'm going to pull those corners to the back and glue them in. Don't forget to zip tie it to the stick first. And you can put as much raffia for the hair as you want, and you can cover up all of these errors on the back. I'm going to take just strands of raffia, parts of a chenille stem, and I'll just make strands of hair. I can always come back and trim it up to get it exactly like I want it. And so I just begin gluing them to the side of my scarecrow's head. and cut off the excess chenille stems 
and place the hat on the head. And there she is, decorating my side porch. I just love fall. Today is Made It Monday and we would love to see what y'all have made. Kay and I always love seeing your projects in our Facebook craft group, Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. So we started a monthly challenge so that you can show off. Each month we announce a new theme and this month's theme is Scarecrows. Send us a photo of your original project by September 20th at midnight to our email address. We will post all of the photos on September 21st, 2020. The winner will be determined by the number of votes the photo gets in our Facebook group. So be sure to invite all your friends and family to come vote for your piece. Voting will close on September 30th and we will announce the winner on October 1st. The winner will receive a $25 gift certificate to our store. The rules are as follows. One, the project must be your original work constructed between September 7th and September 20th. Two, make any kind of scarecrow you would like. We want to see what you've got, so get creative. Three, pictures should be sent to our email address listed below. We will post them all together in our Facebook group and open up voting. Winner will be chosen by the amount of likes. Make sure you send your entries to our email address found in the description box below. Do not post them in the group in a separate post. Don't forget to get your friends and family in on the fun by getting them to vote for you. Good luck, guys! Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to be using the 5-gallon paint stirrer sticks like you get from Home Depot. They come 3 to a pack for $0.97 cent, and we're going to use 3 packs of them. I took my sticks out to the shed and I used my miter saw to cut six of them right where they start to curve and then I cut two more right where it starts showing those measuring marks. I think that makes them like 14 inches long. We're going to be making a pallet. So I lined my longer sticks up making sure that they were all facing the same way and then I took another one and made sure that they were even across the bottom. Now I'm going to use my super glue wood glue and my hot glue to put the pallet together. The wood glue is for that permanent hold and the hot glue is for the fast hold. There is a little bit of gap in between some of the boards so make sure that you get the glue on those areas that touch. Now that our pallet is together, I'm going to take my two shorter sticks and glue them on either side of it at an angle. These are going to be the brims of the hat, but they also are going to make our pallet stronger. We are making a reversible holiday sign. One side is going to be a scarecrow and one side is going to be a snowman. I'm going to start by painting the snowman. For the hat, I'm using Waverly Chalk Paint in the color ink. I painted the stick I used for the brim and the top of my palette, making sure to get my edges. I'm going to use Waverly White Chalk Paint for the body of the snowman. Kay and I are hosting a monthly crafting challenge over in our Facebook group called Crafting Cousins Crafty Corner. Each month, we announce what the theme is, and this month, the theme is Scarecrows. We would love for you to come over and join us and participate in our challenges. We have a link to the group down in the description box, and we post the rules for the challenge over in the group. You could even win something. Now let's paint our Scarecrow. I painted the hat and the brim with Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Truffle. For the edges, I just picked one of the colors and painted them. It really doesn't matter which one you use, you just want it to look finished when you see it from the side. For the face of the Scarecrow, I'm using Apple Barrel Acrylic Paint in the color Beach Comer Beige. I didn't have any chalk paint that was the right color, but this acrylic paint worked just as well. To make the face for my scarecrow, I took a piece of paper and sketched out what I wanted it to look like. 
I do this because I make mistakes when I'm sketching and it's just easier to create them on paper than it is on my painted surface. When I was happy with how it looked, I just took my carbon paper and traced the face onto the palette. Now I'm going to use a permanent black marker and fill in the mouth and the eyes. I like using markers whenever I can for detail work because I have a shaky hand when it comes to painting. Now I'm using Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Pumpkin to fill in the nose. Then I use the white chalk paint to fill in the outer part of the eye and give them those little dots in the eyes that give them some expression. When the paint was dry, I used my marker to outline the nose and also gave him some stitches on it and cleaned up around the eyes. For the snowman, I sketched out the face on paper just like I did for the scarecrow and then I used the carbon paper to transfer it to the palette. I took the black marker and filled in his eyes. Then I outlined the nose and did the mouth. paint the nose I'm going to use that same pumpkin chalk paint from Waverly and I'm also going to give him some dots in his eyes for expression too. After I got the sign painted I realized that I didn't paint both sides of those broomsticks and you could see the unpainted wood when you looked at it so I took my paint and a small paintbrush and painted each side the opposite color that it was on the front. That way, when I looked at it, I saw consistent color. I would suggest that you paint your brim sticks before you attach them to your palette because getting that little brush in there was a pain. Just make sure that you paint them opposite colors so that you get a consistent look when you're looking straight on. Now, let's have some fun and decorate. For the scarecrow, I took some small orange and brown check ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree, measured it across the palette, cut it, and glued it down with some hot glue. Then I cut another piece of the ribbon and made a simple bow for a bow tie. To make my bow, I just crossed my ends over each other, pinch it up in the middle, and then I used a piece of that raffia to wrap around it and tie it off. I fluffed up my bow a little bit and then I used my lighter to seal the ends so it wouldn't unravel and attached it to the palette with some hot glue. To decorate his hat, I'm going to use a fall leaf and a sunflower that I got from the Dollar Tree. I took another little bit of raffia to use to just give it a little bit of ex something extra but I cut it too short and I had to cut it in half and glue it down with some space in between so that it would show out from under that big old flower. Now I just attached my leaf and my sunflower with some hot glue. I really wasn't happy with that bow. It just looked so small. So I cut another piece of ribbon and made another bow. Then I cut off the tails from that first bow and I glued the second bow right up under it and it made it look like it was a bigger bow. Just gave it a little bit of fullness. Then I took one of the small sunflowers that I got from the Dollar Tree and I glued it down into the middle. To decorate the snowman, I took some fleece I had left over from last year and cut off a strip. But when I laid it down, I saw that it was really just too wide, so I cut it in half. Then I just glued one half to each side of the palette. I took the ends, tied them together to give them the look of a scarf, and then I just trimmed off those ends and glued them down. If you saw my haul video last week, you saw this pine branch that I got from Goodwill Outlet. I cut off a piece of the pine and a little bunch of the berries to use on the snowman's hat and I glued them down with my hot glue. I 
kind of wanted a bow on the hat, but I wanted it to match the scarf and none of the ribbon I had would. So I cut three strips of that fleece and stacked it on top of each other. Then I kind of pinched it up in the middle and tied it with some of that raffia. I know it's not really a bow, but I did like how it looked. I didn't like how the raffia looked on it though. So I took my black marker and I colored it in just so that it would blend in. Then I attached it to my palette with my hot glue. I still wanted a little bit something extra, so I took some sparkly sticker dots that I got from somewhere. I had them on hand, and I glued one down in the middle. And then I took a tinsel pot cleaner that I had gotten from the Dollar Tree, and I wrapped it around the paintbrush to make some curly cues. And then I just kind of glued those down into that pine piece. I added a few more of those berries so that it didn't look so sparse, and he's finished. And there's our reversible scarecrow and snowman palette. Y'all, I love this piece. They are just so cute and cheery. I'm going to hate to put them up after the holidays. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you like, we hope that you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all. We would love to have you tune in all week for Made It Mondays, Tutorial Tuesdays, either Hump Day Hauls or Wednesdays, Trash to Treasure Thursdays, and finish off the week with Craft Chat on Saturdays. See you tomorrow!